You're not supposed to touch paintings. I don't recommend you go around to galleries touching paintings, but when it's your own, oh, <laughs> so lovely. Get your shit together. Standing on the sink and I'm bored and you're moving too slow. Take a bucket now, take yourself down below. Bail out the water. Get your shit together. I'm gonna do something a little bit different with you today. I've been showing you like loads and loads of sketchbook tours, but today I want to show you some of my actual finished artwork, like the art that I sell, that people buy, that gets exhibited, like the stuff that actually goes out into the world. Down below, bail out the water. Get your shit together. Standing on the sink and boat, and you're moving too slow. Take a bucket now, take yourself down below. Bail out the water. You'll see a little peek of it here and there, like it's often in the background of my videos. I try and show it kind of as B-roll as we're going through, but I don't think I haven't yet kind of given you an in-depth look. So that's what we're gonna do today. I really hope you like it. In case you're new here, I'm Ellie Trier. I'm a professional artist living and working in Copenhagen in Denmark. I'm nervous, like I'm more nervous about showing you my final work than I am about showing you my sketchbooks, which is weird, but there we go. I've just got these paintings, my Tussie Mussie collection. They've been out um, at an exhibition. They've just come back to the studio. They will actually be for sale as soon as my online shop launches, which should be in the next month or two. So stay tuned for that. And if there's one that particularly catches your eye, um, it will be up for sale shortly. So without further ado, let's look at some lovely paintings, shall we? So I want to talk to you about this collection, but it is super duper personal and it feels really difficult to talk about. Like it's really odd, like trying to describe what I was feeling and what I was thinking as I was making each piece because it's such an intuitive collection. And to be honest, most of it just kind of flowed out of me. So I've done my best, <laughs> but I wanted to give you like an overall idea of what the collection is about. So it's called Tussie Mussie. Tussie Mussie is, a, is an actual thing. In the Victorian era, there um, was this kind of trend for what's known as floriography. So it's the secret language of flowers. You may have heard of it before. And basically people would communicate with each other by uh, giving each other tussie mussies, which were little kind of posies um, that they would either give to each other or they would wear on their clothes. And each flower in the tussie mussie would have a particular, um, a particular meaning. And there were books of all the meanings that circulated. There was, it was like a whole craze. So each flower in your tussie mussie meant, meant something specific. So for example, um, if you put a sweet pea in there, that stood for gratitude. If you put a zinnia in your tussie mussie, that meant everlasting friendship. Um, so there are all sorts of ways to, to communicate. Now, unlike the, the rigid structure of Victorian floriography though, these paintings are riotous and expressive. There's no kind of one flower that means a particular thing. Um, they are, somebody expressed it to me really wonderfully the other day, um, they are memories of emotions expressed as flowers. That's basically what they are. So as uh, an autistic person, I can sometimes suffer from something called alexithemia, which is a difficulty in identifying and expressing emotions. Um, I often, I, I find it difficult to process emotions in the moment. I often don't know until much later kind of how I feel about something or, or what I'm feeling at all in any given moment. Um, so these, these, Paintings, these flowers, these are sort of my stand-ins. Um, they express things that I might not be able to do verbally. They are able to capture emotion that I might not realize that I'm experiencing. Flowers are, are hugely symbolic for me. Um, if you, you're familiar with any of my work, like there are symbols that repeat over and over and over again. Cats is one, obviously. Flowers is another. And they always, for me, symbolize that kind of emotional state, some kind of emotional emotion. <laughs> 
So the way I think of this is kind of like a game of telephone. I mean, I do kind of give you a little bit of insight into what each paint painting sort of means to me, um, what the thinking was behind it. But really it's about um, how you feel, like how these pictures make you feel. Sometimes my original meaning kind of gets lost in the message, but it's a, it's a communication between me the artist and you the viewer so whatever you feel whatever you whatever f emotions one of my pieces elicits in you like that is valid that's part of the conversation that's the I'm calling you're responding like we're communicating in that way so anyway I'm going to go through I'm going to take a couple of my favorite pieces I'm going to try and kind of go into a little bit more detail talk about um like how I made them and kind of the thinking behind them but I really want you to kind of absorb the work and kind of come to your own idea about what it means um, and how you feel about it. So yeah, I hope you enjoy my paintings. I hope you uh, enjoy the video and I'll catch up with you at the end. I forgot to mention, all of the titles of all of the paintings are actually taken from um, an original floriography dictionary. So they are actually um, meanings that, that you would that were represented by flowers in actual Tussie Mussies at the time. So, um, yeah, that's just a fun little extra thing. <laughs> the first piece I want to show you is this one. It's called I'm Too Happy. And it's uh, 30 centimetres by 40 centimetres. It is acrylic on canvas and I actually um, I very rarely use brushes when when I'm painting my final pieces uh, I, I do use them a bit but often I'm using my fingers I'm using um, a whole host of like mark making tools okay, so my favorite tool to use is uh, like a palette knife like this and I also yep, love to use, like you can see this one is pretty well used, like a scrapey tool like this to apply the paint. Um, I use all sorts of random stuff like old sponges, uh, plastic bags, um, the fruit, uh, the net bags that you get fruit in, like all sorts of interesting things to try and make um, interesting marks. Also use rags, like scraping the paint on or daubing the paint on and off with rags. Um, and I really love like these passages of just like really obbly bobbly texture and this passage down here they're just hmm. you're not supposed to touch paintings I don't recommend you go around to galleries touching paintings but when it's your own oh <laughs> it's so lovely it's like shiny bits and knobbly bits and oh mwah, it's so lovely and I work in like multiple, multiple, multiple layers of paint. So you can see like how much depth that, that gives it in like these areas here and here. And under here as well, like there's just so much going on and each layer, I mean, oftentimes you'll just see like a tiny spot of the layer that went before, but it just adds like extra dimension. Um, yeah, so I'm too happy. So the whole collection, as I mentioned, is about emotion and the sort of the memory of an emotion represented as it, as flowers. And this one, you know, I'm too happy, describes that sort of overwhelming feeling of, of joy that you get sometimes. Like it's almost euphoria. It's almost like painful in its intensity. And you get that from this like big swoosh of yellow and these like hot pink spikes that kind of come up like the, there's a there's a heat to it there's an intensity to it and um the blue that I've used kind of throughout acts as a sort of a counterpoint to that like this blue for me in particular is is very symbolic I don't want to sort of over explain it but this is that sort of feeling of like euphoric joy that that borders on the painful I just love, I just love the colours, I love the textures. This is one of my favourite pieces. Mm -hmm. 
So this piece is another one of my absolute favourites. It's called Impatient Resolves. And it's <laughs> it's really tricky to get a good photograph of. Like it really just doesn't come across very well in the photographs. I've tried to get the lighting right in here, but it's really tricky. You, you really have to see it in person, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. Um, and hopefully you can get kind of some idea of, of how it looks. So this piece is called Impatient Resolves and it's... What I was trying to capture was that feeling of having so much going on on the inside and having to kind of keep it all in like a really tightly contained... Um, having to keep yourself contained basically and how sometimes that's just not possible and everything spills out of your neat little uh, emotion container. So that's why I've I've done the the parts the vase is very uh, contained, <laughs> and then the blooms that are coming out are just this chaotic explosion of light and heat and passion and fire, and they're just kind of cascading out of the pot. There's they're uncontainable. There's no way to kind of yeah. They're not gonna uh, sit around and behave. They're not your your. Um, I don't know, your average bouquet. They are messy and, and passionate and, oh, yeah. Okay, so this piece is called For Once May Pride Befriend Me. And it's, um, you might recognise the composition from uh, one of my sketchbook tours. It's actually from one of the pieces in my sketchbook. Um, I'll put that up on screen so you can have a look. So you've heard of the phrase tall poppy syndrome, um, which is when, it's a sort of a cultural phenomenon where people who are successful and talented and, and do really well are kind of cut down by their communities and kind of made to, to shrink themselves down. There's a similar concept in Denmark called Jantelo, which is that um, basically that nobody is better than anybody else, which is lovely, but again, it results in criticism if people, it's felt that people are getting kind of too big for their britches. So it means that a lot of people try and kind of shrink themselves down and hide in order to, um, to not be rejected by their communities. We have this kind of societal fear. We, ha we have this fear as human beings of being kind of rejected by the group or ousted, and it causes a lot of people to just kind of shrink themselves down and, and keep themselves really small and, and try not to outshine anybody else or, you know, keep their light under a bushel. But this, as you can see, these poppies are tall. They're surrounded by nothing else. Like they're just growing and reaching for the sky and shining in all of their beautiful, crazy colors. And, and they're free, they're free and they're doing their own thing and they don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks, basically. They're, they're proud poppies and they are, they're allowed to be proud. They're giving themselves that, that glorious gift. Yeah, I really love this painting. There's a few things that I particularly love about this piece. Uh, one is the line work. I really love the... I really love how the line kind of delineates what's inside, but doesn't describe it completely. So you have this kind of ghost image around, around the edge. I think that's absolutely beautiful. I really love this passage here with the turquoise overlaying the pink and the purple. I really just love the, the depth and the interest in, in the petals themselves. Um, how the colours kind of interplay. The, um, the pastel lines here as well. But yeah, it just speaks to that kind of joy of just doing what you do and existing and being in the world. And it's such a beautiful piece. I think paintings have like an energy and when you stand in front of a piece of uh, artwork, you can really kind of feel that energy. There's like a resonance between you and the piece. And sometimes it's kind of on your frequency and sometimes it's, it's not on your frequency, it's on somebody else's frequency and they love it and it leaves you cold. I think maybe you can get a little bit of that kind of come through in the screen. 
It's not the same as seeing artwork in the flesh, it's really not. And, you know, I wish that I could invite every single one of you into my studio, we'd have a cup of tea and I could show you these pieces in person. But this is the next best thing, so, yeah. I hope you can pick up some of... some of uh, what I'm talking about. It's a real mix of emotions, but what I really wanted to convey was sort of the pride in being you, who you are and doing what you want to do and not caring what anybody else thinks of you. And there's sometimes, you know, that can be very painful sometimes, especially if you get rejected for that. But it can also be utterly, utterly glorious. Like true, true joy. And I hope this piece gives you the kind of the idea that, that you can be both. is the biggest one in the collection. Aww. It's 60 centimetres by 80 centimetres and it's called Tranquilize My Anxiety and this one actually stayed kind of half finished for a really 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 long time like two or three years I think. It took a while to find its way and now it's finished it yeah I mean all the pieces I've shown you I've basically shown you my favourites from the collection and this one is no exception, like the thing that I love about it is this this whoosh of energy, the the upwards drips here in the, the lilac and the yellow there's like, there's so much chaos in this painting, like it, it really does feel like an expression of of that jangliness of anxiety but then we have these gorgeous like calm pink swooshes that just kind of and you can see like the blue coming down from the top it's just calming 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 it's coming through slowly it's an intense painting like it's intense i i i think it's gorgeous obviously <laughs> so this one again this was done in a very kind of tactile way so um, a lot of it, of the underlayers was, were done by using very fluid paint and kind of tipping and turning and tilting the canvas around, getting the, um, the drips to run, like these sideways drips and these curved drips. And for a long time, like it didn't have a top. It was just kind of, I was constantly like spinning the canvas around, moving it, and then gradually kind of carving out this surface and the background and then kind of pulling out the the descriptions of the flowers from the chaos behind. It was a really kind of, I, I had so much fun doing this, like painting this. It was such a, a collaborative experience with the materials and whilst on one level it's about, it's about anxiety, it's also about the kind of the counterbalance of anxiety with joy. I'll show you some of my favourite passages. So I, I love these areas up here where you've got this kind of uh, pink and blue and purple, like there's all sorts of stuff going on here. And then all of these areas where you get these upward drips, like I really love upward drips, it's just something. I love this yellow swoosh and I love how it's echoed in the pink swooshes and I don't think I used a brush this is all done with this palette knife again so it's like carving carving the paint like all of the surfaces I'm going to show you actually I'll try and get a side on shot for you so you can see like all of the surfaces are like they're thick and they're lumpy and there's all sorts of stuff going on here um, and it's because I'm basically like sculpting the paint on the canvas with the palette knife which is my favourite way to paint and I use my fingers and all kinds of whatever I can pick up that I think might make an interesting mark basically it kind of goes in there so yeah and again layers and layers and layers and layers and layers some of them come through some of them don't some of them are like way in the background forgotten about and some of them just kind of make really interesting little corners. One thing I always try and do with my paintings is kind of give you 
there's so much to see. You could just sit and stare at them and you'll find something different. You'll find a different corner or a different kind of expression on the, on the picture plane and it will give you something new. It'll give you a whole new experience. So, yeah. Is these printed, like these circles down here? I think that was done with a bottle cap. I think. I can't even really remember. <laughs> I kind of go into a bit of a fugue state when I'm painting and I don't... Stuff comes out of me. I'm not really aware of it at the time. It's kind of magical. It's the best, the best anti-anxiety thing I've ever found. Like better than medication, better than meditation, better than anything. Just paint. Music, emotion, whoosh, it all comes out. This last piece is called Sleep, My Bane, My Antidote. And it sort of describes the experience of insomnia. Sleep is the kind of the, <laughs> for all of us, really, is the the foundation of living a good life, as far as I'm concerned. If you sleep well, then the following day is fabulous. If you sleep poorly, the following day is just an absolute living hell. So yeah, sleep is the bane of my life. It's the most complicated thing I have to deal with. One of the most complicated things I have to deal with. But it's also, when it happens, it's the antidote to everything. Awful. It's just, it solves so many problems. <laughs> Being tired causes so many problems. Sleeping solves so many problems. So this is really about that. And this is that kind of half awake, half dream like state. These, these, uh, they feel like dreams of flowers, you know, they're not, the, the, the indistinctness of them, the way that they're not kind of, they're so soft, you know, they're so soft and dreamlike. Blue is, blue is kind of, representative of, of the unconscious, like, it feels very dreamy to me, it's kind of like dream landscape behind them, um, abstracted, flowers are kind of more abstracted, I love these, these contrasting colours, I think they, fit, they, they, they create a really unreal kind of atmosphere, uh, there's something sort of otherworldly about this piece, and yeah, Sleep and dreams, the strange places you visit when you're asleep. It's all in this painting. And again, it's full of lovely passages of texture, like here. I love this kind of falling petal here. I love the, the edges of the stems and the, the ridges of texture against that butt up against the flowers. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted you to have the experience of being able to gaze at these pieces for a little while. I really hope that you've enjoyed hanging out in my studio with me today and having a look at some of my paintings. Uh, like I said, if you, if any of these have caught your eye, they will be coming up for sale in the not too distant future. We also have a print shop, which is going to be launching very, very soon, which is so exciting. And we're going to be selling some prints out of my sketchbook. A lot of you have been asking for copies of some of my sketchbook drawings and we're making that happen for you. So I am so excited about that. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we're working very hard behind the scenes at the moment to get everything done. So that's coming very soon. The best place, if you want to get kind of the first look at everything that happens, is to go over to my website, eleanortriastudio.com, and sign up for my newsletter. I send a newsletter out once a month, my monthly bulletin, and then there's also kind of if there's collections released and um, special offers and, and the print shop and everything, it will all happen there first. So do go over there and sign up. The link is in the description. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next week. Bye! -bye.